Have you ever wondered why reality feels so solid and real, even though science says everything around us is mostly empty space? Why does life feel sharper and more vivid than any dream we've ever had? Maybe it's because reality itself is a kind of simulation, not built by machines, but by consciousness. This idea isn't new. Thousands of years ago, ancient philosophers and mystics were already talking about it. In the Hindu Upanishads, sages said the physical world is Maya, an illusion projected by the mind of Brahman, the ultimate reality. The world feels real only because our consciousness experiences it that way. Buddhism also shares a similar view. It describes the mind as a projector, casting thoughts, sensations, and perceptions onto the screen of awareness. What we call reality is simply the movie we're watching inside that cosmic theater. Fast forward to the 18th century, philosopher George Berkeley declared that existence itself depends on perception. To be is to be perceived. If nothing is observing, does it even exist? Later, quantum physics stumbled upon a similar mystery. The famous observer effect showed that particles exist only as possibilities until someone observes them. It's as if the universe waits to be noticed before. Deciding what it wants to be, even ancient Tibetan teachings, describe death as waking up from the dream of physical life into a higher state of awareness, implying that what we call reality might just be one layer of a much bigger simulation. But what if the simulator isn't a computer or an alien intelligence? What if it's consciousness itself, the infinite mind running every program of existence? Hermetic philosophy also said the same thing. The all is mind. The universe is mental. Every level of reality from atoms to galaxies is consciousness observing itself through different forms. When you touch a table, it feels solid, but what you're really sensing are vibrations interpreted by your awareness. Reality feels convincing because the simulation is perfect, the code is consciousness itself. If that's true, then the world isn't outside of us. It's within us. We're not trapped in someone else's game. We are the game, playing itself. Every person you meet, every experience you have, every emotion you feel, they're all lines of living code written in consciousness. When you awaken, you realize the boundaries between self and world were never real. The observer and the observed are one field of awareness, endlessly reflecting itself. So maybe reality feels real because it's meant to. The dream only works if we believe in it completely. Consciousness hides itself inside its own creation, just to experience what it's like to forget and then remember. Every moment of discovery, every joy, every tear, is consciousness recognizing itself again. Perhaps the simulation isn't a trap at all, it's art. The divine imagination exploring, learning and creating endless stories of itself. So let me ask you, if life really is a dream created by consciousness, what part of that dream are you playing right now?